Hi, my name is Ken Spires. I'd like to tell you about a little bit of a project I've got going here. I just got back from uh, Canada last night, and I uh, went up and picked up these uh, amphibious floats. These uh, were manufactured by an individual for myself up in Canada, Quebec province, and I intend to uh, mount them on my uh, Aronka sedan. The sedan is a high-wing, four-place, single-engine aircraft, and I feel that it'll do a good job in terms of uh, being a, a good performer. But this will be the first amphibian float to go on to the sedan. That's been a long-term uh, project for myself, wanting to do all this and put it together. And this is a, uh, a crucial part at, the, at this point. Uh, the uh, floats, after I uh, get the, all the parts together and get painted and whatnot, will be painted, actually, in this barn right over here. This is my workshop. After that, uh, the uh, workshop, the painting is complete. They'll be taken down to uh, the airport vis-a-vis -vis this trailer, only they'll be assembled and they'll be right side up. Out of the water. 
You know, they're up the, the floats are ready to fly. These here are the, the little balls that I had to find to fill in the holes for the pump outs. And the pump outs allow you to pump out each float. Each float is, has got six individual compartments in it. A pump out is a means in which you can pump the float out because all floats, any one time, start to leak. You have to have a way to get the, the, the water out of the float. What you do is remove this pump out, put a hand pump to it, and pump away. And it takes you right down to the bottom. This picture I have right here, our set of pitches, uh, shows two things. And it's helped me extremely in, in the rigging of this uh, airplane. This airplane right here is my airplane. Uh, it is on a set of Edo 2000 floats, which are non-amphibian. Uh, the reason I have it there is just to see the general configuration of the strutting, as you see it here, and I have it on my airplane. And then, of course, any other help it might give me. The, this picture right here is a picture of these new floats that I have. And as you notice, they have wheels on them, there, there, and there. That's the amphibian portion of it. Uh, as you can see, the strutting is the same as I'm doing right here. And right now I'm working on the uh, rudders, which you see right here, and all the wiring that goes into the aircraft rudder. at this point are about uh, three, uh, about eighty percent complete to the point where I feel that uh, I'll be able to uh, get them. But I, uh, I just is redoing all this. This is the uh, Continental O300 engine I just took out of the sedan and uh, it still has the carburetor on it and the oil cooler and that's the muffler system right there and right next to it is uh, is the sweetheart of a like homing i'm going to put in yeah it's, it's a different engine this is a four cylinder this is a six cylinder but the motor mount is the same uh, the difference is this one has another 35 horsepower and it takes a different type of prop and that prop uh, makes a big difference as far as performance An amphibian aircraft and or uh, anything that lands on water, when you try and get it off the water, it does require more power. That's the reason for this change. This will become a 180 horsepower with a constant speed propeller, which allows it to give it max RPM. That max RPM is what you need to get off the water.
starter, you know, I can, I can live with it. Uh, today we're going to uh, get the plane out and perform taxi tests on it. Taxi tests are done to make sure that the brakes work properly, the steering linkages are all right, uh, everything is okay for uh, the, the, the takeoff, which is soon to come right down the road. But taxi tests are very important because you have to have basic control of the aircraft on the ground before we uh, uh, do a high-speed taxi, basically, to take off. Now, what we're going to do here right now is disconnect the battery tender, open the doors, and back it out, and let, let it off its jacks so the tail, once the tail clears, and we're, in, we're out of the hangar. To allow the tail of the aircraft to uh, lower itself, in the process, so I can clear the rafters going out of the hangar. Uh, the, the plane ended up being just a little bit too high at the uh, tail end. Yeah, I, I got to the point where I was going to buy the whole hangar. <laughs> and I was going to raise the roof, literally, physically, to get this uh, airplane in here. So I didn't end up having to buy a hangar. My goodness. <laughs> That worked out good. Didn't have to do that. Tail is cleared. I jack the close up and take out the dolly. Push the primer in and pull the prop through a couple of times and get back up and start it. Okay. The way that's done, real simple. Right there, yep. up here, up you go. All right. Once you're up here, so you can, you can get at the gas tank. Yep. I have a I have a step right here built in. Uh huh. That I can come right up and get on the gas tank. Okay. Oh yeah. You go. Know. Okay.
Okay, should be ready. Pretty easy, huh? <laughs> That was the gear pumping up. Do you hear that? Uh-huh. That was the flow gear. Okay, uh, clear prop. Clear. <laughs>
Okay, I'm about ready to start. When last I, I saw you, uh, my plane was in the grass at Wadsworth Airport. Things were in a pretty bad situation because the gear had collapsed and due to a hydraulic failure. This was all ascertained and figured out as a result of a post-mortem. The uh, airplane now is uh, back on main, main gear, just uh, non-amphibian gear. And the floats are in my hangar, and I'm contemplating a fix. That fix will take place.